Welcome into the New Orleans Pelicans podcast, a podcast dedicated to everything you need to know about the squad. The New Orleans Pelicans podcast starts right now. Welcome to the Pelicans podcast. I am Joe Cardosi, joined by the elegant but restrained Jim Eichenhofer. And uh, boy, we got to see some preseason action. We got to get some eyes on some players and in, in, in real game action we haven't seen in a while. And uh, it just seems like like the wait has been forever long. And now we're, we're off to the races. Uh, got, to, got to see some players we haven't seen in a bit. Got to see some action from the starters. It, it felt good, Jim. It, it felt like Pelicans basketball again. It really did, and I mean, that was a long offseason. Yes. Considering April 12th was the last game, the playing game against OKC, and then last night's game was October 10th, so I may not be a genius at math, but that's almost exactly six months. It's been almost yeah, half of a lots. year. Yeah, Half of a year that we were out of the Smoothie King Center and did not get to watch a game in person, so yeah, it was great. I, I liked what, what I saw from the starting lineup a lot. Um, it was great to have that combination of players back together. Um, I think we saw a lot of what we know and love about each of those players. Yeah. Zion, his first game since January 2nd, had 12, 5, and 5. Did his usual dominance in the paint. Just Very seeing the burst, to stop. just seeing Zion look like Zion out there again after so long of just like hoping and waiting. Mm-hmm. You know, how's he gonna how's he gonna look in game action? Just as a Pelicans fan, it's just gotta be a sigh of relief for a lot of people. And I think he still has a little bit of rust yeah. to shake off, which is understandable if you haven't played as long as he has. It's been that, you know, nine months since he again bringing out the math with yeah. the calendar. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, numbers. Um Brandon Ingram had the and CJ, I think, both made some smooth jumpers that we are used to seeing. Herb Jones made it four starters in double figure scoring in just the first half. And the only guy that didn't get 10 point plus points in the first half was Jonas Valanciunas, but he had 11 rebounds. Yeah. So I feel like everyone did their job. They scored 68 points in the first half. None of those guys played at all in the second half, which was fine. Um, kept to Willie Green's plan of keeping them all under 20 minutes. Um, Jonas played the most of any of those guys with 19. Um, Zion played 15 and everybody else in between there. So um, it was a it was an encouraging first performance by those guys. I mean, honestly, if they had played terrible, I still would have been happy as heck yeah. to see those guys together. Yeah, but just to see them, yeah, together it, on the floor. Right. We're happy. We're, we're just very ecstatic just to have that part of it. But, I mean, they did really well, so, yes. so that's a good step Yeah, they, they looked like themselves, and that, mm-hmm. that's a good thing to see. And, and and you sort of see what this team, as it is meant to be constructed, starting to come together. Uh, and, and a lot of the depth that we're going to talk about uh, with our guest, Mr. Joel Myers, today. But, you know, there are so many players that uh, have been drafted, br- brought over to this team that we haven't really gotten to see because of either injury, uh, they've been they've been away, uh, and and you're starting to see some of that uh, that cohesiveness come together and, and to see how they gel with the starters. It's going to be an interesting season because I feel like there are so many players now on this team that fans have been waiting to see that mm-hmm. they're actually going to get eyes on in meaningful minutes this season. Yeah, I think maybe at the top of the list in terms of the second unit in the reserves that fit that description that you said of guys that we haven't gotten to see as much as we want to is Kyra Lewis. Um, He got to play uh, 23 minutes last night, did a lot of really good stuff, had nine points. Um, Really the last two seasons because of the injury have been interrupted and and kind of curtailed. Um, Dyson Daniels played a good chunk as a rookie last year, but the end of last season he was – out because of an ankle injury. Right. Um, I thought he looked good last night too. Played 25 minutes, had 10 points, four for eight from the field. And and like you mentioned, Joel Myers will get into more detail on some of those guys. But um, we're talking about you know recent lottery picks. Jordan Hawkins was the 14th pick in the draft this past June, um, four months ago. Yes. Um. So oh, so many numbers, man. And, I'm so confused. <laughs> so I, th- I think he did. He had some good moments, too. I mean, it's going to take him a second, like it does with all rookies, to sure, adjust yeah. to everything. He got to play a little bit with Zion and some of the other starters. Um, but mo- I think mostly if he, w- if he broke down his minutes, he was out there with the second string and some of the reserves. I'm curious to see when he's out there with some of the starters, the kind of shots he gets, the quality of open looks right. that he gets, because we know he's a knockdown shooter. He had some. He had a couple open ones last night, including his first, very first NBA shot yeah. was a corner three that went down, rattled in, and went through the hoop. So that was nice. Um, after that, I think more of them were contested. So we'll we'll see how um, how that develops. And and but I'm looking forward to uh, 
seeing what he can add. Yeah, absolutely. It's just great to see another wrinkle added to the team. And uh, you want to see Jordan Hawkins get his confidence up, just being able to knock those shots down consistently. He talked about how the spacing is going to be different in the NBA. Uh, you know, maybe he thought it was going to be easier because there are other focal points on this team. But the speed, of course, is going to be different. The defenses are going to be different. But uh, just great to see those minutes. And uh, as we said, uh, TV commentator Mr. Joel Myers is going to be joining the podcast. He has insight like none other. He is uh, back and forth traveling with the team as always. And, uh, you know, he we just want to talk to him. Uh, fan favorite Mr. Joel Myers. So let's give the man a call on the podcast here. Joining us on the Pelicans podcast, you know him, you love him. He is a, a just sort of a jewel of New Orleans, I would say. People see him in the arena. I think he gets a bigger pop uh, from the fans than maybe some of the players. Mr. Joel Myers, the voice himself. How are you doing, Joel? I'm doing well, but I'm fortunate because I get to live in New Orleans. Yes. And not many people can say that. So when you say... Man, when I move around the arena, it's because, first of all, the popcorn is exceptional. I've been 120 <laughs> made fresh, and Jim, I can offer you know about that. <laughs> True. But it's just, we have so many loyal friends. It's unbelievable. Everybody comes into the arena. It, it's truly, you know, the, it's, I know it's, it's kind of trite to say, but it's a family of friends. We have that many people that we know that have been coming forever. Yeah, Joel, I mean, we, we were kind of hoping to do this podcast from maybe like a wine tasting with you or something yeah. like that, but... But this is this works just as well that we have you on the phone. We're so. just glad to have him. It may not be posh, but Joel's here, so right, we're glad. Right, exactly. Any, you know, anytime, guys, anytime, <laughs> and it does, doesn't require a libation. I promise. <laughs> and it, it, we're we're recording this early, so it'd be I'm not a day drinker anyway. <laughs> yeah, Jim's already got his <laughs> beer helmet on, but you know he just wakes up like that every day. He's pumped. That's and true. Ready That's to my go. normal Wednesday. Yeah, but. <laughs> Anyway, uh, typical. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Joel, be, you know, before we get into, you know, maybe some of the specifics of the game last night, which you and Antonio Daniels and Jen Hale called on on Bally Sports. Um, I saw a lot of I don't know if you noticed this. I saw a lot of commentary from people online about your broadcast, you know, just specifically what you and AD do, like how you call the games. And I saw a lot of complimentary stuff yep. kind of nationally about just, for example, how much information you give about the opposing team um i think it seemed like i mean you might know this better than me but it seemed like a lot of people were tuned into that game last night across the board i don't know if it's because you know people are very interested in specifically the young players that new orleans and orlando has i think it's the myers heads just following that that could be too that could be like the grateful dead very likely um i mean i was but i was going to ask you just about your guys philosophy in terms of just kind of the general information i actually this morning got to watch maybe the first eight, ten minutes of the game in the first quarter before I had to come in um, and heard you guys talking a lot about um, some of the details about Orlando, like Markel Fultz, you were talking about his background and Suggs, uh, some of the stuff with Jalen Suggs with him in there. But, I mean, what? how would you describe kind of your philosophy as far as it just seems like you guys are very invested in knowing as much as you can about the league overall and, you know, not just the Pelicans. Well, I think AD is like myself. You know, AD does a show every day on Sirius XM national radio. I, I look at it as a national telecast. Mm-hmm. We're on the league pass. It goes not only all over the country, but international. And you guys know, you see the, the tweets that come, whether it's Germany or Amsterdam, people are watching all over the world now. Yeah. And there's a billion people in China. Well, 300 million are subscribed to the NBA. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. they're on NBA.com. So I look at every game as a national telecast. So I prepare like last night, the Orlando Magic. That's an ascending franchise. That's mm-hmm. a really going to be a really good team. Franz Wagner is a great player. They they have a number of players that are going to be around for a long time. Their window is just opening for that franchise. So. Uh, I prepare truly, guys, like we are going out on a network, not just for $2.5 million in our region and potential eyes there, but it's a national telecast. I think all broadcasters now, all 30 of us in the NBA, 30 TV, 30 radio, I think all of us look at it that way because there's so many eyes all over the country and all over the world watching the NBA. It's not just about us. It's mm-hmm. about doing the job so you're prepared for – and we know the Pels backwards and forwards. We live with them. Yeah. And so it's preparing for the opposition as well. 
and and Orlando is becoming a very very good story. Yeah, it, it's, it's it's interesting the stuff that you detailed as far as the audience. It's it's kind of cool to see that even for preseason, it's gotten to that point where you have so many eyeballs and so many people paying attention. So that was just one thing that I noted as far as kind of the coverage and the reaction to last night's game. Um, specific to the game itself for the Pelicans, um, what, what were some of your takeaways from the starting group as far as being able to see that combination of five players for the first time since November of last season? And even just specifically, even just seeing CJ, Zion, and, and Brandon Ingram together for the first time since November of last season. Felt good, didn't it? Really yeah. felt good. Yeah, for and sure. And 38 points in, in, in the first 12 minutes of play for the Pels, 68 at the break. So, and then the starters, of course, were not involved in the second half and it got away, which is understandable because you got a lot of guys on the floor in the second half that combinations, they've never been on the floor like that together. Uh, but I, I can't wait to see when Trey comes back, the overall depth, because yeah. you didn't have Jose last night. Uh, you didn't have Larry Nance Jr. Those are two guys in the first eight. Cody Zeller is going to be first eight or nine. He's your backup big behind Jonas and a different type of big because Cody can run. That's one thing he can do. He can get up and down the floor. He's got to stay healthy because he's been nicked up the last couple of years. But And, and Cody played for James Borrego at Charlotte, so he knows the system. He knows what James wants to do, uh, the Pels assistant and associate head coach. But I, I do want to see in the preseason the growth of Kyra, mm-hmm. Dyson, EJ, Jordan, do I need to mention last names? Because I love I love our locker room and what we're developing. I think Griff and Trajan, Bryson, Swin, they're doing a really good job of bringing in not only good players, but quality people. No knuckleheads. Mm-hmm. So I want to see that development with the opportunity there. You know, Kyra had his moments last night. Dyson, definitely. Dyson's shot looks great. Mm-hmm. Dyson was way ahead of the game last year defensively. And he talked about what he did during the offseason, the way he changed the position of his guide hand, the way his, his shot has changed. And it looks like it. It looks like there's conviction in his shot. Last year it was kind of a question mark. There was doubt on the release. This year there's confidence on the release. So that was nice to see for, for Dyson last night. Hit half his shots, one of four from beyond the arc. But I want to see the depth grow during the next three preseason games. There is no question. When Brandon, Zion, Jonas, Herb, CJ, throw Trey in there, because as far as I'm concerned, Trey's a starter too. When you've got those six healthy and available, the Pels can compete with anybody. There's no question. And then the depth when, when you've got guys off the bench like that. So when Larry and, and also Jose are ready and Cody, uh, Cody as well, mm-hmm. Najee, Kyra, Dyson, it's a deep group. It's going to be tough to get minutes for Jordan and EJ and guys like that as you get into the regular season because you can't play more than nine or ten a night. That's usually what it boils down to, a nine or ten man rotation for most teams. But I really, really feel confident about the first six. And to me, the Pels have six starters. Yeah, That's what it boils down to. Yeah, you know, you mentioned um, three of the guys that are that probably would be part of the second unit or would be major contributors between Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance Jr., and Cody Zeller right now. I mean, I, I think one of the if you want to, I mean, we want to see everyone healthy, but if there is a kind of a silver lining of some of the guys being out, is that I think there might be more opportunities in preseason for some of the other players that you mentioned, um, Dyson Daniels. I think. Not only um, is his shot, I think, improved, but he's playing bigger, I think, on both ends of the floor. I think that's one thing that people are – you're seeing some of the stuff of just that size that he has where he's able to get offensive rebounds, something that I noticed in you know some of the training camp as well, not just the game that he, he just – I mean, he's stronger as well. Um, but what, what, do you, what were some of the things that you saw from – I mean, some of the other players I think that might get more minutes – over these next couple games than they may have otherwise based on some of the players not available, um, such as Kyra Lewis. I mean, what did you see from from him last night as well as uh, Jordan Hawkins? Well, you see, Kyra brings something that not many guys on the team have. He can bring pace and speed. He's, he, along with Darian Sebron, are the quickest on the team. There's no question about that. Baseline to baseline, those are the two fastest on the team. 
So they they're uh, have they quality their quality and the asset that they bring is huge because they can change the tempo of the game when they come off the bench. Najee was a workaholic last year. Najee is just a hard worker, heart in the right spot, wants to compete. You know, a lot of people forget what Najee played, what, 75, 77 games with 21 starts last year. And I may be wrong on the, the overall games, but I think it's about mm-hmm. 77. Yeah. And he showed up. Najee always showed up. Both ends of the floor cared. So need Najee on the floor and working the way he did. And, and then you, you give time to Jordan Hawkins and EJ Liddell to develop, build up their game, get their strength. Jordan, his strength, he's so young. And EJ getting the rhythm back to his game after a game a year off yeah. and getting that bounce back to his game. So uh, it's a deep team now. That's why I say it, you, they need to capitalize on the next three preseason games to get a rhythm, to get a, a feel, and to let the coaches know if somebody goes down, I'm available. I can help. You can plug me in. There's not going to be a drop-off. So that's big for guys like that. We already know what Najee and, and Jose and the guys that I mentioned, mm-hmm. we already know what they can do. They can play at this level and, and play at a high level in the NBA. So uh, it's a good situation now, really good situation. I just can't wait to get Trey back on the floor. I just There's something about that young man. I, I said to a couple of people last night that it worked scouting the game, not New Orleanians. Mm-hmm. And I said, Trey is the kind of guy you want his number up in the rafters. You want to retire his jersey. Yes. You want him to be a Pell for life. Mm-hmm. So you want to build that way with guys like Trey, her, Zion. I could get on the list because now things are headed in the right direction for the franchise. Yeah, we can't wait for Trey to get back on the court. I mean, just the – jump that he made last year was incredible. If he's even able to make 20% of the improvement that he made from year one to year two, it's going to be incredible. Plus the he brings to the, it's just the dynamic of the team. He's just right. so integral, it seems like. Yeah, but not, not only guys, not only can he play, and he's, career, he's committed to his craft, because I've watched the videos over the summer before he got hurt, and what he's been doing, and, and the way he's taking his craft seriously. He's a pro already at a very young age. But, he is a quality person. Yes. He comes from a great family. Yep. And that's the way you build. That's the way you, you, your culture and your environment grows. And then others, like the Saints have had for the last 20, 25 years with Mickey and Jeff and Kai, guys want to be in that locker room. And, and that's the way you build a franchise. And so that's why I bring it up. With a guy like Trey, he's just a good person. He's a great young guy. And, and the Pels have more of those like Trey. So uh, I don't want to harp on it because you got to be able to play. There's no question. It's all about what you do on the floor, but it's certainly nice when you have really quality people, real strong individuals in your locker room. Joel, before you, before we let you go, I'm sure there's people out there right now that are yelling into their podcast saying, Jim, uh, when are you going to talk about Zion? So I guess, before we let you go, I wanted to ask you just what, what did you think of Zion? I mean, for him to have basically played his first game in a little bit more than nine months, and he played 15 minutes, he had 12 points, five rebounds, five assists. I mean, what was your what were your impressions of him just back on the court last night? Well, I'm not objective. I like him a lot. <laughs> so I, I, I'm serious when I say I'm not objective. He is just a, he's a good young guy. He's a good teammate, and more and more he's going to be involved with his teammates. You can see he's a quality kid, and can he ever play? See, it, after the first five minutes, they brought him out, and then he came back, and you could see there was like, it was bounce. And because he was frustrated a little bit early, didn't get a couple of whistles. Mm-hmm. He got whacked a couple of times. They let it go. But that only great days ahead for Zion. Yeah. It will have to stay on the floor. There's no question about that. But that's why I say when you have CJ, Zion, and Brandon on the floor, your big three, and then Herb's shot looks wet. Herb looks great. Yeah. The corner three is perfect. And I mentioned that more. we were at shoot around in the morning. It carried over into the evening. His form looks good. He's got confidence. And we know what Herb can do at both ends of the floor, especially at the defensive end of the floor. Yeah. Plus, he makes the right decisions at the offensive end of the floor. So, when the Zion, and don't forget what Zion's going to do. 
It's going to attract so much attention. Yes. It's going to open things up for others. So, Jim, when you ask about Zion, it was a great 15 minutes. Not a good, but a great 15 minutes just to get him back on the floor, get him back into rhythm, let him build up his conditioning and his endurance. You don't get that in workouts. You get it playing up and down. And he is, I can't wait to see him out there for 35, 36 minutes a night. Well, it seems like we have so many unpolished gyms, so many players we've been waiting to get eyes on either because of injury or just whatever the reasons they've been having to sit out are. And now we actually get to see those gyms get polished with game action. And uh, Joel, I'm just excited to get the season underway. Thanks so much for hopping on the podcast. Uh, Always great insight from you. Looking forward to seeing you and Antonio Daniels uh, all season long. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. And I will look forward to more opportunities to be on your podcast. Have a good trip, and uh, we're looking forward to more calls from you guys. You got it. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Big thanks to Mr. Joel Myers, the voice himself. And, uh, man, we're we're rocking and rolling. And on to uh, Birmingham. Uh, But, man, it's uh, going to be another Birmingham game versus the Rockets, apparently. So uh, let's get rolling. Let's get the gym folks. Yeah, it should be another interesting matchup. I thought um, playing against Orlando Magic was a good way to start preseason. Um, As Joel mentioned, they have a lot of fun, intriguing young players, as do the Pelicans. So It feels like the early 90s to me. Like the Bills are good, the Dolphins are good, the Magic is good. (laughs) It's just so many teams that haven't been really relevant for a while. It's all popping back up now. I feel like a kid again. Uh, But yeah, the Magic apparently... Are good again. Yeah, it's, they're it's odd. They're getting there. They're making big progress. They might be one of the teams that people pick as maybe the, they could be the team sleeper. that improves the most. Yeah. The sleeper surprise team. Um, speaking of the '90s, the Rockets. I think both of their championships in franchise history were in the '90s. That's true. So, yes, going I'm gonna get keep, some Zubaz pants, man. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> Keeping with that theme, um, I think the Rockets are another team that's gonna gonna be kind of fun to to see what they have. Um, another team, I think. I'm not sure if they'll be at the top of the league pass rankings, but they'll be somewhere, I think, in the, yeah, an intriguing in the top team to tier. Watch for sure, yeah. Um, they actually played their first preseason game last night against the Pacers and won. Not that that matters too much, but right. they um, they played a lot of their guys. Um, they, their starting lineup, just to kind of briefly go through this, Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Alperin Shangoon, Dylan Brooks, the villain from yes. Memphis, is the signed there, and Jabari Smith Jr. Those guys all played last night for the Rockets. So I would guess that we'll see them again. Kind of a, kind of another team that's pretty compelling to see a bunch of new faces that are very key to what they're trying to do. So right. we'll see how that comes together. Yeah. So it's going to be another one where we get to see both teams kind of gel a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rockets are going to be an interesting test of this Pelican squad as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see. And uh, any players that you're looking to watch, Jim, I know you've always got your jeweler's eyepiece attuned uh, to something <laughs> and somebody's going to be under. It. I'm glad you asked Joe. The I actually have I'm going to cheat a little bit and give you two players oh, to watch. Damn. Um, I know I'm kind of breaking my rules here. I was gonna I went with one. I went. With I knew Jordan you Hawkins. came in with a leather jacket on for a reason today. <laughs> I went, with, went with Jordan Hawkins in the opener against Orlando, but for this game in Birmingham, I thought it was only right to have two players to watch that are both um, cri- former Crimson Tide players, both. Yeah! Alabama natives. Alabama. What are the chances that you'd have two guys that both went to the same college and are both actually from that state as well? Yeah. So yeah. my Ooh, my two players to watch so well. are um, Herb Jones and Kyra Lewis Jr. Yeah. Um, I like a lot of what Herb has done in preseason. Yeah. I tweeted this last night that he, I think his finishing around the basket has improved. He's kind of added some little reverse layups and some, you know, up and under moves. Yeah, and I think a lot of people maybe thought that that Herb was kind of done developing because he did so much on the defensive end and then mm-hmm. they thought that's what he was. But the thing about Herb is he never stops grinding and just right. to see him rounding out his game and, and working very diligently at it, uh, you know he's going to work hard at it. You know it's going to be a part of his game going forward. That's just a land yap to me because you, you knew what you were going to get out of Herb before. To right. add that wrinkle is just just great. Yeah, I have full confidence that he's going to keep adding stuff to his game because, like you said, 
he locks himself in the gym and sometimes yes. they have to to yank him out of there and sometimes the veteran guys like I think CJ has commented about this in the past that sometimes he has to go up to Herb and be like dude you can't be in the gym 19 hours right. a day That's so yeah. so yeah Sleep. he's going to keep getting better and he's going to keep um improving his offensive game um and then as far as Kyra Lewis goes yeah um a lot of good stuff in the game last night his quickness is evident um, he had a couple good finishes, and his shot looks really good as well. So um, looking forward to both of those guys getting a chance to play in front of, I'm sure, what will be a lot of um, family and friends. And by the way, too, uh, both of those guys, I talked to them briefly on Media Day, and they mentioned how um, they love playing in New Orleans, obviously because it gives people from Alabama a, yeah. an easy opportunity to be here. But they also said that for both of them, I think – um, it might be more the case for one than the other, but um, Memphis and Atlanta, bo- they both love playing there. So, hey, you get to play in Birmingham yeah. in the preseason, and then you get to start the regular season in Memphis. And the uh, the Herb heads and the yes. Kyra heads will be out in full force, I'm sure. Yeah, I got to say, my, my Herb head is just swollen after I saw that quote of him saying he says uh, he's from New Orleans to people. Right, you know, right. Because yep. he, Feel, mm-hmm. I, I just wanted to run through a wall, man. I still do. I'm like, Herb's my guy. I'll fight for that man. So yeah, I'm That's just right. I'm just ready for more preseason action, and uh, yeah, we're we're gonna get to see more of the Pelicans' wrinkles ironed out, and uh, here we go on to Beham, and I hope people come out and enjoy that game, and uh, we will be back on Friday to break it down, Jim, and uh, he has got the Jim foe already. A uh, big thanks to Mr. Jim Eichenhofer for joining this old dog. A uh, big old thanks to Mr. Joel Myers for hopping on the podcast, giving us some great insight uh, as him and AD. Get ready for their season on TV as well. And big thanks to you for listening to the Pelicans podcast. Please tell your friends and pals to give it a listen. Check it out. We are found everywhere you get your podcast. We will talk to you once again on Friday. And until then, go, 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 Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek. Join us three times per week on pelicans.com the Pelicans mobile app, or you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek.